Thank you so much for that amazing introduction. It is once again an amazing honor to be uh, here with you guys this evening. And uh, wow, this is, this is really amazing. This is so awesome. I mean, in, in South Africa, we have, we have Table Mountain, and that's pretty much what we have. And in Australia, I mean, you guys have got the lights, and I mean, it's the awards evening, and the PowerPoint slideshows, and it's really, it's really awesome. So, what's that, Chris? Oh, no, please don't tell me that. No, I'm good. <laughs> Anyways, um, yes, I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been asked to share a bit on my, on my presidential story tonight and, and the journey that myself and my wife um, uh, went through to, to, to going presidential. It's unfortunate that she couldn't be uh, with me tonight because she's really, you know, she's, she's my rock and my master coach and counselor. Um, and, and she's just, she's this short, by the way, but she's really, really powerful. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, she's, she's an amazing part of our business. And, and uh, before, before I get going with my story, I would just also like to, to um, give honor to my upline um, silver presidentials and good friends and mentors, Peter and Sulani Lowe, um, back in South Africa. Um, they've taught me everything that I know about this business, and, you know, they're my inspiration and my, my, uh, my best friends. And, and, and my, my master coaches as well. So, um, and just once again, guys, just thank you so much for this opportunity, really. It's, it's, it's a real, real honor for me to, to be here tonight sharing my story with you. Um, you know, coming from, I'll, I'm, I'm going to share my story soon, but I mean, coming from my type of background, I wouldn't even in my wildest dreams um, have imagined that I could be standing on a stage like this tonight. So it's really, really special for me. And, and I honor you guys. I honor your leadership in Australia, you guys are blessed with phenomenal leaders, um, uh, you know, and, and there's great things happening in Australia, in Manatech, Australia. I know that, and we can all feel it and sense it that, you know, looking into the future, there's, things are just going to explode. Things are going to explode in, 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 in this Australasian area. So I think you guys can give yourselves a round of applause for this amazing event and what you're doing in Manatech as well. So yeah, my story, um, I'm going to share first of all, you know, what it was like for me growing up before Manatec. Um, I'm from a very, very small town in, in um, it's called Standerton, and it's, it's about two hours from, from Johannesburg. Uh, and I mean a very small town. There's literally probably about three or four robots, or traffic lights, as you call them, <laughs> traffic lights in Australia. Yeah, we were having a good laugh about that earlier, robots and all. We call them robots in South Africa for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but that's how small, you know, the town was that I grew up in. And, and um, you know, I was really, really privileged growing up as well. Um, you know, uh, I come from a, a, a quite a successful uh, family um, who run a, 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 a car business. And my whole family is in the car industry and the motor industry. Every single one of them, except for me, <laughs> which, um, which, uh, which, is, which is quite interesting. Um, but, you know, I, I, um, my, my mother's side is English, and my father's side is, is Afrikaans. So don't worry about not pronouncing my surname properly. That's, that's, that's fine. You can just call me Gary Van A, as Mandy did earlier. That's just fine. Um, but, but, yeah, you know, I, I come from humble beginnings, and I, I, I went through school in Standerton as well. And, you know, I've, I've always grown up with a, a massive, massive uh, passion and talent. Uh, I've always been talented in sport. And, and, and that's, that is, that's always been my big thing since I, was, since I was this small. You know, I've always wanted to become a, a Springbok rugby player. And um, I don't know what it's like in Australia if you guys, you know, a lot of the young boys growing up want to become wallabies, you know. Um, but that's what it's like. In South Africa, we are rugby crazy. And, and, you know, I think most young boys growing up in South Africa dream of becoming a Springbok. So I, I had that exact same dream. And, and um, you know, a lot of people have, have told me, and, and since I've been little, you know, that you might just forget about that dream because of where you come from. You know, you're not going to be able to go to a big school or, you know, um, you'll never be able to play for a big franchise because it's impossible from where you're coming from to do that. Um, but I was really blessed to have amazing parents who, who have always supported me um, in my journey 
not only in sport but in life. So I honour my parents as well tonight, even though they're not here. I will always honour my parents for the role that they've played. Um, you know, and especially, I, I wouldn't have gone presidential either if it weren't for the solid foundation that's been laid by my parents. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I grew up, I, I excelled at sports at school. And um, I played cricket. I love cricket. I know cricket is big in Australia as well. You guys are really good at cricket. Well, you're actually good at pretty much everything. <laughs> um, but I played cricket. I played a bit of provincial cricket. Um, I played provincial tennis. And, uh, you know, I, I did track and field as well. And um, really excelled at rugby. Rugby was my big thing. Um, so, so, you know, I, I, was, I was very privileged to, to play for my, my regional team at school. Um, and, and, you know, from that, um, I got selected for the, the, the Western Province um, Institute um, squad. So, so, I mean, that, that for me was amazing. We've got a, a national competition as schoolboys that we play. And I was, uh, you know, blessed enough to participate in that event. And from that, I got recruited and I got the opportunity to actually move to Cape Town um, and start playing for, for the Western Province junior sides. So to me, that was a dream come true. Um, not only did I want to become a Springbok, but I've always been a Western Province fan growing up, which, which was quite amazing for me. So, so, you know, when I got the opportunity to do that, um, it, 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 was, it was really great for me to, to go. So, so that's when my, my rugby journey really kicked off, um, you know, and I, I moved to Cape Town um, not knowing anybody. It's, it's, Cape Town is right on the other side of South Africa from where I was from. So it was really new beginnings for me, and, and um, you know, I, I had to meet new people as well and, and you know, get used to the, the big city life, because, you know, coming from a small town, you know, that was, that was amazing for me as well. Um, so, you know, my rugby journey, it, it, it went really well um, up to a certain point, and I was throwing everything at it, and, and I've always been a committed person and, and a really driven person with, with big goals and big dreams. Um, Growing up all the way straight through high school, that's, that's just always been me. I've, I've always had this, this uh, drive to succeed. Um, really competitive as well, which is good sometimes, sometimes not so good. Because I'll get really nasty just in a game of table tennis, you know. <laughs> People wouldn't want to play with me until I win. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, I, I started, I got the opportunity to play for for, for, for Western Province under 19, um, the, the junior side. And, and, and that's also where I met my upline, Silver Presidential, um, Peter Lowe, who was playing for the Stormers at that time already. Um, so he was, a, he was a rugby player as well, and we, we connected um, instantly. I think he's, he's a phenomenal man with a lot of energy and passion. So, um, but anyways, rugby was going well. I was living the dream. You know, I thought this is going to be a fantastic journey. Everything's going so well for me. And, and you know, I'll, within the next four to five years, I'll become a springbok at the rate of things were going. And, and at that stage of my life, I really only had rugby. That's all I had. Um, I had no experience in business. I never wanted to get involved in business. I was a real, you know, in South Africa, we call it jock. I don't know if that, you guys get, yeah, I was a real jock. And, and you know, I was, yeah. It's actually terrible, to be quite honest. I mean, yeah, especially in South Africa, the rugby players are really, you know, we just play rugby. That's what we do. And I was telling somebody yesterday, you know, they asked me, what do rugby players do after training? Well, most of them go home and play Xbox or PlayStation, you know. So, um, so things were going well. Um, and I played under 19, I played under 21, and I broke through into the senior ranks as a 20-year-old. Um, I got my first cap, my first provincial cap as a 20-year-old, um, which, which, which was quite great. I mean, that's, that's quite young for, for any sportsman. Um, so, you know, it was fantastic. And then um, things changed very quickly for me, very, very quickly. Um, and, and I went through a really tough time in my career, uh, you know, because at that stage I started getting really, really bad injuries. And, and, and the injuries hit me one after the other and in quick succession. So, you know, I played three senior level games at that stage. And, and, and then, you know, I got a very, very bad knee injury. I tore my knee ligaments um, off, as in completely. Um, 
you know, and, and that put me back quite a bit. Um, and, and I mean, that was, yeah, that was a six month injury. So I was out for six months. Um, I couldn't compete anymore. I could literally do nothing. Um, and you know, that, that was a tough time for me because I mean, I've grown up with this massive dream and passion to, to become this, this, this rugby player, this Springbok and playing for Western Province and all. And you know, just when I got through the ranks, this, this, this massive injury hit me. And um, thank goodness, Peter, you know, Peter was there for me at that stage and, and he started supporting me and started mentoring me then already. And that was before he was in Manatech. Um, but anyways, I got past that. Six months later, I was back on the field and I got another opportunity to play for the senior side again. You know, so, so they were keeping faith in me at that stage, which was great. And I remember walking onto the field um, in my first game back after six months. It was six months injury, and then there was another two-month break because we didn't have any games. So it was eight months without rugby. My very first game back, I was so fired up and, and, and you know, happy to be back. And you know, I want to show the people what I've got now. And in the 79th minute of the game, and the rugby game is about 80 minutes long, so it was the very last minute of the game, I tore those exact same knee ligaments again. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that broke my heart. I, I cannot explain to you how, how I was feeling at that stage. Um, it, it was really, really bad. And, and, and I just hit rock bottom. Um, you know, I, 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 it, it was really tough. And, you know, my family weren't there. You know, it's a new place, Cape Town. You know, family is 800 kilometers away. Um, so challenging times. So that was another six months. All right. Got back after that. This was the year 2010. Yes, 2010. I got back. I had an amazing season, injury-free in 2010. It was great. Um, you know, I was I was the top player at Western Province, the top junior player at Western Province at that stage. I scored the most points. Um, uh, in, our, in our national competition, which was, you know, it was great. So I was back on track. Um, 2011, I again got the opportunity to play at senior level. Um, and, and we played the Hurricanes in the first game of the Super 15, went very well, um, you know, and, and three games into the season, yeah, three games, yeah. <laughs> hurricanes? Oh, yeah, you know the Hurricanes? Awesome, yeah, New Zealanders, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are really good at rugby. Yeah, seriously. I mean, you can claim that. Yeah, you guys are just the best. An awesome culture of rugby, yeah. But anyways, I mean, yeah, just after the Hurricanes game, um, I tore my ankle ligaments. Yeah, and uh, that was four months. Anyways, I'm going to cut to the chase. After that, I tore my ankle ligaments again. It was another four months, okay? So I missed basically two years of rugby. That was my dreams crushed and 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 I, I was I was at my lowest of lowest you know there was and at that stage like I said there was nothing left for me to be honest there was nothing left for me I mean doctors were telling me that you know the chances of you playing rugby are not very good you know and now this is what I'm hearing from 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 specialists and and you know orthopedic surgeons and and you know they were telling me that my career is pretty much over and that's all I had at that stage. And this is the dream that I've grown up. I've just wanted to do this my entire life. So that was so tough. But the good news is on the way. Because then Manatech arrived. Yes. And this is where my life changed forever. And I know that my life will never be the same. Um, so it's, it's, this is where the journey really started. And, and you know, after this, this fourth, uh, fifth, terrible injury. I remember I was in hospital being operated on and, and I just got out of theater. I just got out of theater and, and um, you know, morphine does crazy things to people. <laughs> yes. And in my case, you know, it was phenomenal. <laughs> it was really nice. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, and this hospital in Stellenbosch that I went to, they knew me by then. I mean, because I've been in there about six, seven times before. So, I just kept telling them, whatever you gave me last time, just do that again. Like, you know, and that was great. And um, I remember coming out of theater, you know, just after my operation. And I was so out of it. And Peter called me because he just got involved with Manatech. He called me up and he was so excited. He was so excited. I mean, he's a real exciting person. I don't know if any of you know Peter, but he was, he's really passionate. He's, he's, he's just a bundle of, of, of excitement and enthusiasm. And he called me up and he was like, Gary, Gary, do not stress. Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about your injuries. Don't worry about rugby. I have got something that is going to change your life. Have you ever heard of Manatech? And I was so, you know, out of it. I was like, listen here, partner. Have you ever heard of Jesus before, you know? Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, still, uh, we still have fun about that story, you know, today. It's, it's, it's the best because that was my introduction to Manatech. And he thought he was going to sell me something. I was like, hey, don't try and sell me that. I've got something for you, you know? Uh, <laughs> but anyways, Peter came to visit me in hospital. And he shared a bit on, on, on this amazing company with these amazing products. And at that stage, you know, I heard of Manatech before, because in my first year in, 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 in res, in, in, do you guys call it hostel? I don't know what it's like. Is it hostel? When you, the university students, okay, yes. Um, there, was, there was somebody who came and did a presentation on, on, on Manatech, but at that stage, I was young and, you know, carefree, living the life, rugby, um, so I didn't take much notice. But anyways, Peter came and he shared this with me, and I said to him, listen, yeah, come back to me when I'm at home, you know, my entire leg was in plaster of Paris, you know, from, it's quite scary, from here down, all the way down there, it's really bad, so it was, it, was, it, was, it was quite difficult, so I just said to him, just come visit me at home, so a few days after that, he came and visited me, and that, that, that day is, 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 is probably one of the greatest days in my life, um, apart from getting married, which was just as awesome. <laughs> my wife's not here, so I might just add that. Manatech could have been the best there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, guys, when I saw this, when I saw the heart of this company, because you've you got to remember one thing. I didn't want to get involved in business whatsoever. I didn't take a business subject at school. I was not interested in business at all. In, in well my family actually drove me away from business. That's actually the thing because they were so business driven and, you know, I was always the odd one out, sportish and whatever the case may be. So I just, I never wanted to get involved in business and I never would have thought in my wildest dreams, you know, that I'd do network marketing, you know. And, 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 but when I saw this company, when I saw the heart of this company, when I saw the heart of the people involved and the mission behind everything and, and the power of these products and the technology and what it was doing to people, you know, I just, I just had to get involved. And at that stage, I don't think I know why I got involved, except for the fact that I knew that there was so much purpose and significance behind what this company was doing. That, that's what captured my heart. So I got started and knew nothing, all right? And I told Peter, listen, you've know, you got you to gotta tell me what to do. Like, what do I do? Like, where do I start? You know, he just said, oh, Gary, don't worry about it, bro. Just go. If you have an attitude and excitement, you'll be fine. So... <laughs> Just go out there and be enthusiastic. You'll do just great, you know. So I was like, okay, cool, you know. It's, this is something to get excited about, so let's go do it. And, and I literally went out there not knowing very much about what I was doing, but I think the people just caught my excitement. I was so excited about this company that, you know, I signed a couple of people up in my first week, and, and you know, but the big change for me was is I got my parents on the product, okay. And I need to share this story as well, um, Obviously, my parents, coming from the, the, the car, the motor industry business, sorry, that's the better word, the motor industry, you know, if you're not selling a car, you're not selling anything, all right? That is pretty much what, it was, what it's like in our family. So now here comes this young gun, and I was so fired up, and I said to Peter, listen, yeah, I'm going to fly down to my family first thing. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fly down to my family, and, and I'm going to share this with them because this is life-changing. Everybody's going to get involved, right? Everybody's going to get involved. So that's what I did. I booked the plane ticket. I flew down. And, and, and you know, it, it, it didn't go as well as what I thought it would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a big, big shock. It was, it was quite bad. Um, I got my... <laughs> and, and you must know, this was... I mean, this is... This is changing my life here, you know. I'm so excited, and I get to my family, and I do a presentation for them. I got the whole family in, in, in one room, and, you know, they're all involved. They're all successful in business, you know, and, and, you know, most of them are quite wealthy and whatever the case may be. And here comes this guy, and now it's network marketing, and it's these amazing products changing people's lives, you know, and they crushed me. They just crushed me, you know, it was, it was so bad, and my uncle was saying this, and my grandfather was saying, you're going to waste your money, and we've all tried these things, you know, and didn't work for any of us, and you know, where does the money come from, and I didn't know all those stuff by then, you know, that's just, uh... but anyways, I mean, my mom, she actually came to me afterwards, and she said, listen yeah, my boy, please don't worry about them, um, 
she actually thought I was going to break down in tears. It was that bad. Um, but, but luckily, I got straight onto the phone with Peter again. I said, listen, yeah, you know that thing that you do when you get people all excited and, you know, inspired? Just do that again because I need that now. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, you know, that was the start of my journey. And you know what, guys? Just one thing that you need to know. And I know there's a lot of new people here. There's a few regionals. Here are a few people close to presidential. You know, the persecution might just never stop. Okay? you got to know that. you got to know that when you're involved with a company as great as Manatech, when you have something that is shaking the world, okay, and, and, and you have a system in place like we do in Manatech, you better believe that there's going to be persecution. It will come. Okay? People are going to tell you you won't be able to do it. They're going to tell you you're not good enough. They're going to tell you you're going to waste your time. It never stops, trust me. People still think that, you know, they'll ask me, are you still doing that thing? You know, are you still doing that thing? Oh, yeah, I'm doing that thing. It's going quite well, you know. But, but just stay close to your upline and just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Just bust through those, neg those negative people, the dream stealers. We call them dream stealers, you know. Get the dream stealers out of your lives as quickly as possible and surround yourself with people who want to help you to succeed. Because ultimately, if you stick in this business long enough and you stay close to your upline, you will go presidential. Trust me. You have to do it. It's, it's a given. So, so, and that's what I did, you know. And guys, I got so much, so much um, um, negative feedback from, from, from people close to me. And that was tough for me in the beginning, you know, because, I mean, I lost so many friends, so many friends. Um, yeah, and, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, the toughest part for me, and this is actually, yeah, this, this is a bit more serious for me, actually, because, um, you know, I, I built up quite a few friends in rugby, and I had guys that, that, have, that, that were playing with me at that stage for four or five years already. And you know what? They just, they just threw me away completely. Um, I never got invited to any, we call it prize, barbecues. Um, I didn't even got invited to any parties. You know, my friends would have birthdays and they wouldn't even invite me. That's how bad it was. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, that wasn't easy, and, and um, I remember <laughs> at the rugby, they, they called me Manor Bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny, like, we'd be doing warm-up drills. Yeah, play me Manor Bear, here you go. That's, that's fine with me. Um, but, but it got serious as well to a point where, you know, it actually got so ridiculous. It, it really got ridiculous. Um, I, I mean, at a stage... You get capped as a Western Province player if you play 15 or more games. So there's a, there's a ceremony, much like this, um, you know, formal, and, and you receive your cap. Uh, and, and it's a really, really proud thing. It's a, it's a proud, traditional thing that Western Province do. And, and you know, for me, you know, that, that, that still stands out as, as, as a great achievement. And, and, you know, especially coming from my background and the way I grew up from a town in the middle of nowhere with these big dreams and Having achieved that for me was amazing. And, you know, I remember that evening, you know, I, I got onto stage and they called out my name and, and the bunch of the rest of the squad of players were behind stage, you know, shouting, oh, yeah, Manatech, you know, and, you know, nasty things. Um, and, you know, that was a nice because, I mean, this, this was supposed to be special for me and, and, you know, they just didn't know when to stop. So that, that was tough. But I need to tell you that, you know, like I said before, it's going to come. It's going to be there, and it will always be there. But, but, you know, at the end of the day, if the dream's big enough, the facts don't count. And, and yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I read in a book the other day of, of you know, it was just a little saying that it goes something like, if you're going to worry about what people think of you, you will never be able to f fulfill your desires. And, and, and that's big. So, so, you know, I got through that, myself and my wife including. You know, it was really tough for her as well. Um, you know, because a lot of the friends that I was involved with were her friends too. Um, and, you know, a lot of the couples we had that we used to be friends with were her friends too. So we stuck together. We stuck really close to Peter. We stuck really close to J.P. Costa, who's our, our silver presidential upline as well. And then we got amazing, amazing, amazing leadership and mentoring from, from our Platinums in South Africa, Louis and Leonie von Alinda. And, and the most, sorry, I get a bit emotional when I. I 
I cried the first time I told my story, and I was, I was telling myself, don't do it again. <laughs> These people don't know you. Don't cry. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, you know, they've been so phenomenal in our lives, and, and, and they've really made such a big difference um, in, in both myself and my wife's business. So, you know, we stayed really close to them as well. And that really got us through all the tough times. I mean, there was a stage where we were all over the show. You know, we were building the business without any structure. We were doing our own thing. And, and at a stage, you know, we lost about, you know, 10,000 GPV um, in one business period and crazy things. It was, it was really, you know, so there were tough times. But you know what? The great thing is that we, we, we got through it all and, and, and we did what we had to do. And I can tell you guys one thing. We went presidential, okay? Um, my team didn't select me for the national finals that day, okay? But that same weekend, they actually lost the championship, but that same weekend, we went presidential. So, yes. Yeah. And that was awesome. That was awesome, you know? So there was something to celebrate. Um, they were all depressed, and they were, you know, it was really sad for them. We were like, whoa, man, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you guys making fun of us. Why are you so sad? Yeah. You know, I got an opportunity that will cheer you up. <laughs> Probably don't want to hear about it, but anyways. Yeah. So, so you know, guys, we, 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 um, it's been a phenomenal journey. And I can tell you guys one thing. Go presidential and beyond. Okay? Obviously, silver is probably the new presidential. But presidential itself is really special. It is really special. It is so awesome. The lifestyle, the money, you know, that's good as well. But, but just the, 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 you know, there's so much significance behind it. And it's really an unseen thing. Things change when you go presidential. I don't know. It's like something in the atmosphere changes. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, 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 you know, for us, for myself, for my wife, you know, it's changed our lives. I don't have to play rugby with, with, with that, that, that feeling of, you know, will I get contracted again next year? Will I have a job next year? You know, where's my career going? I don't have that stress because I know that I'm building something big and massive. And there's, 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 this, there's this future for us. And, and, you know, we, we get to go and do amazing things. I mean, trust me, Manatech will do so much for you um, in terms of incentive trips. And, 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 you know, I mean, here I am. Who would have thought that I would be here? I would have never have thought this. You know, this is, this is amazing. And, and this is what the company does for you. They, they look after you. They care for you. They treat you like royalty. It is amazing. It is so, it, it is so, so great. So, so go presidential. I can tell you there's, there's nothing like it, except going platinum, I guess. But, <laughs> but we'll get there. But really, guys, it's, it's, it's been an awesome journey for us. And I, I really want to encourage all of you guys, you know, stick together, you know, Create unity within each other and feed off each other because I tell you what, there is no opportunity like this in the world. There is nothing like it. There is no opportunity where you can change people's lives at the level that we do, whether it's health-wise, whether it's from a financial point of view, being part of this amazing mission. We are changing the world. That's what we're doing. We are changing the world. And, 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 and you know, we're all a part of that. So, so let's do great things. Let's do great things. Let's become pe great people. Let's strive for greatness. And, and, you know, that's really something that, that, that we strive for in South Africa, and we speak about it all the time. You know, we really want to change the world and, be, and become somebody great, each and every one of us. And I think together, you know, we can, we can do great things. So Australia is an, an amazing place, and I've really enjoyed it. And, 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 yeah, thank you so much again, once again, for this opportunity. Thank you to Australia Corporate. Thank you, Al, so much, um, you know, for, for, for everything you do for Manatech as well and, you know, for allowing myself and Vince to be here as well. It's, it's really been awesome. And to all the leaders in Australia, man, you guys are so cool. You guys are so awesome. And, and thank you for you as well. And thank you for the, 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 the inspiration and the impartation that you've, you've just shared with us. With over these past two days. It's really been phenomenal. And we're going to go back to South Africa with an excitement and a fire and a passion and a burning desire to change the world. So let's do it. Thanks a lot, guys. It's been awesome. Thank you.